We've heard your complaints and now we are following up to the dozens of messages you sent us after our report on the continued issues with Riverlink. Problems the toll collecting agency says it's working to improve. One driver told us he's been charged for bridge crossings he did not make with a car he does not own. Riverlink telling us there appears to be a misread and our senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton explain. Volvo XC60 black. It was the new SUV. New dad, Brant McCool, got before his now one-year-old daughter was born. So that our baby was safe and had everything that she needed. Ironically enough, a week before her first birthday, invoices came in the mail. Here is one of the photos of with one of the tickets I got. As you can see, that is a white, light-colored Honda sedan. They reveal an apparent mix-up. Not yours. Nope, not at all. The plate number almost matching. Everything lines up with my car, except that last digit in the car model. There's no Volvo sign there, and it's a different color car. What was your first reaction when you saw the photos? Well, uh, a big out-of-state company just wants to milk their profits and really doesn't care about the people of the communities they're servicing. And I knew immediately that something was wrong, and then I started seeing these stories pop up, so I knew that it's a whole series of issues. In our initial report on Riverlink's nagging problems, we told you about customers having trouble getting answers from customer service, both in person and over the phone. Where do these charges come from? Why was this account charged for this What crossing? do they tell you? That they don't know, that they don't have the answer, uh, that we can call back. In McCool's case, he submitted this form on February 5th, disputing bills and late fees sent his way. More than two weeks later, still no word back from Riverlink or the new provider, Electronic Transaction Consultants, based in Texas. ETC wasn't ready for prime time. They probably talked a big game to the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and then decided and then actually didn't have the resources or the preparation in place to actually handle the volume of complaints and tickets they were going to get. Late Thursday afternoon, Riverlink spokesperson Mindy Peterson responded about McCool's case, saying, quote, it appears to be a misread that will be resolved during the dispute process. She also told me fees do not increase during that dispute process. And we are getting word that maybe McCool's uh, process has been achieved there, that there is some good news. Riverlink told us it's choosing not to enforce car registration holds during what it calls this transition period. Meanwhile, the Jefferson County Clerk's Office said it has not received official word from Riverlink about this change. Well, Metro Police are asking you to stay alert as they continue to search for the person who attacked a 79-year-old woman. Police say earlier this month she was stabbed to death inside of her Fern Creek home. Our Connor Stefan and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie have the details. Oh, we got to do the QR code here. We were installing my ringtone camera because of the uneasiness of the lady that I lost across the street. Police identified that 79 year old woman Thursday as Betty Collins. LMPD's homicide unit has opened a murder investigation into her death after determining someone stabbed her. Police say they discovered her body on February 12th. I guess it was just like, wow, I can't believe this area because we've never heard of it. Oh, mercy. It's like, what in the world has happened? Tammy Bronwyn has lived in the area for several years. We enjoy our neighbors. We have no fears of anything. And says she knew Collins. Oh, yes, I knew her. We all talked. She was just one of the old-fashioned ladies that was never afraid of nothing. It's just terribly, terribly awful. Another friend of Collins, who was too afraid to speak with us on camera, said this of her late friend. Quote, she was the nicest lady. You just don't expect anything like this. When it's someone you know, it's scary. Police are still searching for a suspect at this time. That's low. Somebody that was minding their own business in their own place. It's horrible. It's got to stop. In a statement, an LMPD spokesperson said the department, quote, wants to advise the public that while we are aggressively pursuing the parties responsible for this heinous attack, there are some measures you can take to stay safe. Those are locking your homes and cars at all hours and reporting anything to police that poses a safety concern. In Fern Creek, Connor Steff and WHAS 11 on your side. If you have any information that could help police in this case, leave that anonymous tip by calling 574-LMPD or going to the department's online portal. Indiana State Police seized nearly $20,000 worth of items from a Jeffersonville home owned by Jamie and Misty Knoll. Investigators say the former Clark County Sheriff bought those items with funds from the Utica Township Volunteer Firefighters Association.
And new documents reveal he used the business credit card to purchase several appliances for this historic mansion along Ohio River. They included cooktops, an oven, and a French door refrigerator. Noel is facing 25 felony charges, including theft, tax evasion, and official misconduct. His wife, Misty, is also charged with theft and tax evasion. Both have pleaded not guilty. The U.S. Department of Justice is giving Louisville $2 million to combat gun violence in the Newburgh neighborhood. The money will fund the Newburgh Gun Violence Reduction Project, which will allow the Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods to open an interrupter site in Newburgh. These sites put advocates in the area to mitigate conflicts. However, what, what, what excites me most about this effort is that it reaffirms our commitment as an organization and as a city then any effort to address violence must be in partnership with our community partners, ensuring a fair, just, and equitable approach. This will be a three-year pilot project. Well, trying to walk or drive across 9th Street in Louisville can be challenging. A $25 million project to reconnect West Louisville's neighborhood with downtown has been in the works since about 2016. The reimagining project will accomplish that through art, a green space, and two-way conversions. For years now, a physical barrier on Main Street has isolated residents in the west side. Metro Councilman Philip Baker says this project is the first step to healing the divide. If we're going to be the compassionate city that we talk about, this is our first step of healing some of those pasture ingressions. Eventually, bike, pedestrian, and bus lanes will run all the way to Broadway. There will be a public concept design meeting come June. All week, you've seen us wearing the same black dress. So many of you reaching out to ask about it. This is to support the Junior League of Louisville's Little Black Dress Initiative. The event raises awareness about people experiencing poverty and the challenges they face, especially when it comes to resources and getting a job. Well, here's how you can help. First, donate new or gently worn professional clothing to one of the five Highland cleaners locations on your screen in Louisville. Professional is not limited to dresses, pants and blazers. Scrubs and work boots are also needed. You can attend the Little Black Dress wrap up event tonight at Big Spring Country Club. To read more about the league's mission, just go to louisville.jl.org.